When you were around 19 years old, Martin Luther King got assassinated. No, I was older than that. I was a senior in college. Okay, so you're about 22 or so? I was 21. 21. Okay, so you clearly remember as an adult the impact of that situation. Well, for me, that was a small impact. I wound up being the last judge hearing the James Earl Ray matter. Did he, in fact, assassinate Dr. Martin Luther King? And had he not died and his local attorney not died in close succession, it would have been my finding that he was not the gunman. That Remington 760 Game Master they've got in the Civil Rights Museum is not the murder weapon. It's not even close. And it was a two-man hit team that killed him from the fire station dormitory. It wasn't the flop house, and it wasn't in those bushes. So, yeah, I got into the deep details of Dr. King, and that three- or four-year period, that case was kicking around in front of me. So you're saying that the that James Earl Ray did not kill Martin Luther King? No, he didn't King, get even, and see, even though most people, well, he, he was convicted kill him. for it, right? He didn't kill him. Uh, it's interesting, the homicide file for the Memphis Police Department reaches the same conclusion back in 1968. Uh, they entered their file in protest to the DA's office. Their conclusion was, Ray is not the gunman. He was not even in Memphis that day. We know conclusively where he was. So why do you think he got convicted for the murder? Well, he didn't get convicted. He pled guilty. You have to understand, though, the news media puts it out as he was the self-confessed killer of King. That's not true. All through the transcripts, the entirety of the record, he never confessed. And often he said, I never said I killed King. I didn't kill him. I'm pleading cause of Alford. That's A-L-F-O-R-D. It's a moderately old U.S. Supreme Court case, and it says even if you are not actually guilty and you are pristinely innocent, you may plead guilty to the charge if you think that doing so is in your best interest under all of the circumstances as you know them to be, and you're doing so freely, voluntarily, understandingly, knowingly, advisedly, and intelligently. So Ray had gone through all of these and had lost, but there was something that came up. Modern scientific methodology took away one further necessary element. All of these things had to be there, and the state had to have a reasonable factual basis upon which to proceed otherwise. The thing the state relied upon was the rifle, but modern scientific methodology excluded that rifle from being the murder weapon. The bullet they pull out of King's body has a rate of rifling twist of one turn in every 11 and a quarter inches. The rifle that Ray had had a rate of rifling twist of one turn in every 10 inches in a bad manufacturing defect that is not apparent on the death slug. Uh, he was shot with an XM-21, it's a 762 by 51 millimeter NATO caliber weapon with a special stainless steel barrel, a 3 to 9 telescopic sight modified by a company known as Leatherwood. It was a Redfield sight, and they used special subsonic ammunition with a suppressor on the end to reduce the velocity of the bullet to below supersonic to confuse the sound signature. The shot came from the dormitory in the fire station through a window that had been slightly parted. They were several feet inside. It was a two-man team, a spotter and a shooter. That's what he got killed by. Uh, if you shoot somebody at that closer range, which was about 50, 60 yards, with a 30 caliber rifle anywhere in the torso. If the individual is standing next to an emergency room, it's a non-survivable wound. 
but what they did is they took a head shot they almost missed because the bullet was reduced in velocity. It hit King on the right cheek, took out some molars, wrecked his tongue, came out between his jaws, left the body, hit his clavicle, ricocheted under the skin that covered the clavicle, nicked his carotid artery, went over his right shoulder, down across the back and lodged between the left scapula and his back skin, and the bullet never penetrated his thorax. Now that sounds a little weird, but it's not uncommon. So he bled out from the nick carotid artery and they almost missed the shot. And Ray was nowhere around. So had he lived, you would have actually found James Earl Ray not guilty and released him from prison? Well, he would have been close. He had another involvement in this whole thing, and that was that he was a willing part of what amounted to a conspiracy. He was one of about four or five alternative scapegoats, and they picked him for a number of reasons. I did talk to a Captain Tommy Smith, who retired as head of homicide for the Memphis Police Department, who was the first detective on the scene. He said the shot couldn't have been from the flop house because there was a window that he was supposed to have fired the shot out of, and who told me that, I never found out. He said, but there was a limb about this thick growing diagonally through the window, and you couldn't even see the Lorraine Motel from that location. He said, I came back with crime scene in about an hour, and the whole tree had been cut down, and I found out there was a cut down order sent out to the sanitation department early that day, but they were on strike, so they weren't going to cut it down. So, you know, it gets back to the show. We're going to start bringing some reality back to television that's not the kind of dysfunctional reality that's so popular these days. We're going to start you should have gotten this in the fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. You didn't. I know you didn't, but here's what the rule is, and let's see if you can become good Americans because of it. Be brave, be honorable, be forthright, stand up, be counted. See, I always said something bad about this so-called international war on terror. This is just an interesting thing that I did. I said, we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. What are we supposed to be so terrified for? Hundreds of thousands of Americans have been injured or died trying to secure freedom and liberty. So we're going to give it up because we got slightly scared. Be brave. Stand up. 